Hello, everyone, and welcome to the September consulting webinar, Supercharge Your Data Capture with Import Agent. My name is Michael Mathis. I am the Solutions Director here at CDI, and I will be your host for today's webinar. If you have questions at any time during today's webinar, please post questions in the questions box at any time. We do have staff monitoring questions during the webinar, and we will have plenty of time at the end to go over any additional questions you may have. Some tips for success today. Be sure to take notes and or screenshots. I also find it helpful to notate how far into the webinar we are so you can review the recording after the webinar. Don't be afraid to ask questions. We'd love to hear all of your questions, and we will have time after the webinar for any questions that do come up. Please complete the survey after today's webinar. We love to hear all of your feedback and any ideas you have for future webinars. And also remember that this webinar will be recorded and available on the CDI YouTube channel within a few days of, of our webinar. Supercharge your data capture with Import Agent. The intended audience for today's webinar are LaserFiche end users and LaserFiche administrators. And this webinar is applicable both to LaserFiche cloud environments and LaserFiche self hosted environments. During our webinar today, we are going to learn what is Import Agent. We will configure Import Agent to monitor Windows folders. We'll learn how to start workflows on imported files. And finally, we will capture emails with LaserFiche Email Archive. To get started, what is LaserFiche Import Agent? LaserFiche Import Agent is a tool for automatically retrieving files stored in a Windows folder and importing them to a LaserFiche repository. This Windows folder can be local to the machine where Import Agent is installed, or it could be on a network folder or a network drive where Import Agent has access. Email Archive is an Import Agent tool that can be used to automatically retrieve and import emails from an email inbox rather than a Windows folder. So when should I use LaserFiche Import Agent? A lot of offices have a large multifunction device. So the big printer, scanner, copier, do it all machine in the corner. These MFDs can be set up to scan files to a network folder. And that network folder can then be monitored by LaserFiche Import Agent. This way, users will go up to their multifunction device scan in the stack of paper that they have and by the time they get back to their desk and sign into LaserFiche, LaserFiche import agent will have those files imported into the repository automatically. We can also configure hot folders. So we have a shared folder created on our network. Users can then drag or drop files into that folder or save files into that shared folder and LaserFiche Import Agent will then import those files automatically into the repository for us. To get started using LaserFiche Import Agent, we need to use the Import Agent Configuration Utility. This utility allows us to create, edit, and delete Import Agent profiles. We can start and stop the import agent Windows service from the utility. And we can also configure various global options, such as OCR options, imported file types, and advanced monitoring options. To create a new profile, we can either start a new empty profile or copy settings from an existing profile. If we don't have any profiles created yet, we don't have the option to copy settings from an existing profile, so we will be prompted to create a new profile. 
Next, we will be prompted to sign into Laserfiche, where we can sign in using either our self-hosted environment or Laserfiche Cloud. When using a self-hosted environment, if you are using Windows Authentication, the Windows account assigned to the import agent Windows service will be used to connect to the repository during the time of the import. So make sure that account has appropriate rights and licensing to access the Laserfish repository. After signing in to our import agent profile, we can configure the general settings for our profile. So here we can configure the profile name, which Windows folder is monitored, whether or not we're monitoring subfolders, and what file types we're going to allow to be imported using this Laserfish import agent profile. Under properties, we have the ability to change the sign in account. So if we wanted to change which Laserfish user we're using or change from Windows authentication to username and password, we can do that by clicking the change button. We can configure our document properties, such as the document name and document folder. And here we're able to use a combination of the static text and or tokens to dynamically name or dynamically configure our folder. The tokens available contain information from the Windows file, such as the creation date, last modified date, file name, file path, and more. We can configure import agent to specify the, or to assign the Laserfish template and template fields. Again, we can use a combination of static text and or tokens. And if we wanted to add additional fields that are not part of a template, we can use the add remove field buttons to add additional fields from our repository. If you have tags configured in the Laserfish repository, you can select zero or more tags that you would like import agent to automatically assign to the documents when they are imported. Next, we can determine the schedule on which import agent is going to be monitoring our folder. So we can monitor the folder continuously or schedule import agent to import the files only at the specified times. We also have the ability here to disable this profile. So if we don't want our profile to run currently, we can disable the profile when we are ready for this profile to be used again, we can then re-enable the profile and import agent will start importing those files according to the schedule. Under the processing tab, we can configure various processing options, such as whether or not we want to retrieve text from the file and or use OCR if no text is available. We can also configure Laserfish import agent to generate Laserfish pages for PDFs that it imports. So instead of pulling in the PDF file, Laserfish import agent will convert that PDF file into Laserfish pages. So we have a native document then that we can reorder pages, annotate, and do anything else we would like with Laserfish images. And finally, under pro post processing, we have the ability to determine what happens with our files after they are imported. So if a file is imported successfully, we can either delete the file or we can move the file to a specified folder. So if we don't want those files deleted, we want to 
review them or we still need them somewhere in Windows, we can choose Move To. And after Import Agent is done importing our files, it will move those files automatically into the folder path that we have specified. If anything fails to import, Import Agent will then move that folder into the configured folder for, for our errors. So if the LaserFish server is being restarted and Import Agent is able to connect to the repository, or if we are missing a required template field, at that point, Import Agent won't be able to import that file and it will move it to the error folder. We can also harness the power of LaserFish workflow to provide additional processing for documents or emails imported by LaserFish import agents. So we a lot of times have auto filing workflows that are created to automatically file documents to the correct location in the repository. We can use import agent to, or I'm sorry, we can use workflow to manipulate data and or look up data from databases or third-party systems. A use case of this would be invoices are imported from a network drive with the import number in the file name. LaserFish workflow could parse out that invoice number, perform a data lookup based on the invoice number to apply additional information in the metadata, and then Workflow will then file the document to the correct location within the repository. So not only do we have those files from Windows coming into our repository, we are also able to then whoosh them away into the appropriate location with all of our metadata applied automatically. LaserFish Import Agent does not interface directly with LaserFish workflow. However, it is easy to configure a starting rule matching the import agent profile configuration. So we can watch for a new document being created in the path configured in import agent with our template name that import agent is assigning. We can also filter our starting rule using the user. So if import agent is running as a dedicated user, we have a LaserFish user named import agent. We can have a workflow watch for documents being created by that import agent user. So it will work, it'll run on those documents and not other documents that are in the repository or pulled into the repository by other users. We are also able to capture emails using LaserFish Email Archive. And this will allow you to automatically archive email messages into a LaserFish repository, assign metadata to those messages, and save the attachments. So instead of monitoring a Windows folder, we can monitor a folder with inside a email mailbox for new documents coming in. To configure the LaserFish email archive profiles, we'll first configure our basic information, which is going to include our profile name and the mail server type. It is highly recommended to use IMAP. SMTP is deprecated and does require firewall and network configurations. Um, CDI support can assist with some of that if you do want to use SMTP. However, it is highly recommended to use IMAP. When we configure our mail server, we can choose either basic authentication or 
Microsoft 365 OAuth 2.0 authentication if we are connecting to an Office 365 mailbox. If you are connecting to a Gmail mailbox, there is some additional configuration that will be required to allow basic authentication. And those steps are outlined within the help documentation for Email Archiver. Next, we can configure the message retrieval. So how often are we going to be polling our mailbox for new mail? And in our post processing section, we can choose which folder we're going to be monitoring, along with other options such as the folder that email messages will be moved into once they are processed, or an error folder if the emails are not able to be processed. Under the Archived Messages tab, we can configure the document name, import folder, and volume. Again, we can use a combination of static text and or tokens. When we are importing emails, we also have the ability to access information from that email header, such as the to address, to name, from name, sent date, lots of fun information there. Under attachment handling, we do have various options. So we can choose to include the attachments in the same document as the email message. We can separate those attachments into separate documents in the repository. So they will be removed from the email and stored as a separate Laserfiche document. We can choose to leave those attachments in that same email message and file them to a separate document. Or we can choose to separate those attachments and discard the email message entirely. So if we don't care about that actual email, we just want the attached files imported into our repository, we can choose that last option to accomplish that. Now that we know everything there is to know about Laserfish Import Agent and Email Archive, let's jump into our live demonstration. So to get started, I'm going to open my Laserfish Import Agent configuration utility. I have a shortcut on my desktop. You can also find this under the Start menu. So here's my import agent configuration utility. Under the profile menu, we can choose options to view our various options for Laserfish import agent. So we can, for example, configure the OCR settings for all of our import agent profiles. These would be the default settings that import agent is going to use. We can configure the file types. So these file types are going to be imported as Laserfish documents rather than as electronic files. We can choose under the Laserfish files area to recognize LST files as Laserfish list files. And we can also recognize files with the LFB file extension as a Laserfish briefcase. So if we export a file or if we export a briefcase from Laserfish, we can use import agent to pull in that briefcase file and the contents of that briefcase will be extracted into our repository rather than having the briefcase file imported as an electronic file. Finally, under advanced, we have some options for our file monitoring interval, how often we check for new files, and our import thread account. I've been using import agent for about 17 years now, and I don't think I've touched these advanced options once. 
All right, to get started with creating a new profile, we can select our Create New Profile button in our tool. And this will bring up our profile editor. So we can give our profile a name. And I apologize for the audio cutout. It looks like my internet dropped for just a second. Under our monitored folder, we can browse to our Windows folder that we want to use or enter in our path manually. I'm going to leave the retrieve files from subfolders box checked and we'll import all files. If we wanted to import only files that match a filter, we can add that filter in here and select either a pre-configured option or enter in our own file name filter here. Under properties, we can again change our sign-in account. So if we no longer wanted to use our admin user, we can change that by clicking our change button. Otherwise, under document properties, we will name our document. So here I'm just going to leave it with the default of our file name. And we will browse to our incoming documents folder in our Laserfiche repository. Under fields, we can choose a template to assign and fill in our template information with either stat, uh, static text or a combination of static text and tokens. Under our tokens, we have the ability to pull information from our file. So we can pull the file name, file path, the extension, the file creation date, and the file modification date. The creation date and modification date of the file cannot be stored as the document creation or document modification date in Laserfiche. So it's recommended to use these tokens to save that information into template fields if needed. So our document category, I'm going to call this our subfolder. Since that's required, we do need to have a value. And the rest of this information we can leave empty. We won't be assigning any tags at this point. And under schedule, we can either monitor continuously or at, speci at specified times. At our specified times, we can click the add button. And this will allow us to specify the day of the week as well as the time that we are going to start and end monitoring. So if we only wanted to monitor during the week, evenings or weekends, we could configure that with our monitoring time period options. Under processing, I do want my documents to have OCR text. So we will first try to retrieve that text from the file itself. If we are not able to do so, import agent will then use OCR to generate that text. I'm also going to have Laserfiche pages generated from PDF files. When we convert PDF files to Laserfiche pages, we can preserve those PDF annotations from the PDF and Import Agent will automatically convert those into Laserfiche annotations. Under post-processing, here I'm going to leave everything at the default value. So when files are imported, they'll be moved to our processed folder. If there are any errors, they'll move into our IA error folder. I'm going to uncheck 
delete empty subfolders. Even if that subfolder is empty, I do still want that folder to remain in Windows. And finally, after document handling, again, we can leave these all default for our webinar today. However, we could choose to create a new file or update the existing document in LaserFiche if a document with that same name already exists. So if I if we already have a document in LaserFiche, we have a new document or a new file dropped into our Windows folder with the same name as that LaserFiche document. We can then either append our pages, prepend or replace our pages. If we choose to create a new document, this will automatically increment the document name with the parentheses two or parentheses three at the end of the name. So here I'm going to save my profile. I'm also going to edit this existing profile. I don't think I disabled this one. All right. So now that we have import agent configured, I have my import agent folder set up in Windows already. And I will pull in some sample files. So here we'll pull in samples seven and eight. These files are going to be coming into my incoming documents folder in my LaserFiche repository. So if we move that out of the way, drop these into, oh, I need my subfolder. I almost forgot. Call these new documents and pull these in. So I want to copy instead of move. So import agent is now monitoring this folder. And within just a moment or two, we will see these documents pull into the repository. And as they are pulled into the repository, they are removed from the new documents folder that we are monitoring. And we should see these moved into our processed folder under new documents. And here are the two files that were imported. Looking in LaserFiche, we have sample seven, which is our PDF, and sample eight. If we check our metadata, we can see our document category was specified with new documents, which was the name of our folder. We have our client documents template assigned, and we have the document date populated with the default date. If we go back into our profile, we can make a couple adjustments here. For our document date, I am going to change this to be the file creation date. And we will. There's one other property I wanted to change. I was going to no longer keep that original PDF file. So if we save our changes here, we can go back to import agent. I'm going to create a new folder here named webinar. And we can pull in sample two, three, and five. So we will drag and drop our file. I keep trying to move these instead of copy them. We'll copy our files into our folder. If we go back to our repository, import agent will kick in in just a moment. There it goes. So here we have sample five, which was our PDF file. And we no longer have our PDF attached to that document. We only have our LaserFiche image pages. If we look at sample seven, 
we see that we have both our electronic file as well as our image pages and thumbnails. So between that first version of our profile, we had our both the electronic file as well as our images. With that latest change that we had made, we no longer have our PDF file, we only have our images. Let's do a little cleanup here. So now that we have seen LaserFiche import agent in action, let's take a look at LaserFiche email archive. Everything opens on the wrong monitor. There we go. So with LaserFiche email archive, the configuration utility does look very similar to our import agent configuration utility. So to get started, we'll create our new profile. We will sign into our repository. And at this point, we have our add new profile wizard where we can configure our email archive settings. I'm going to name this profile webinar Gmail. I'm going to be using IMAP for today's webinar. And I'm going to authenticate to my Gmail mailbox using basic authentication. We'll fill in my server information my username and my password to test the connection. So here I was able to connect successfully. One thing that does need to be configured for Gmail is you're not able to use your normal Gmail password. If we test our connection, we're going to get a message saying, Application specific password is required. This Google support document is very helpful. It provides step by step instructions on how to configure that application specific password. So here I'm using my app password and we're back on track. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to watch this folder every minute and I'm going to watch for anything in my LaserFiche email archive folder. I'll leave the other options as the defaults here. Under my archived messages, I'm going to be naming these documents with the email subject. Our folder is going to be, let's change this to incoming documents, email archive, and I want these to be filed by, under email, we can file these by the sender address. So whomever sent that email is going to have a file under our email archive folder. And that's where those documents are going to live. We'll retrieve the text from our emails. And we can choose to file our documents or our attachments in the same document as the email message and as separate documents. This gives us additional options here where we can choose to save only attachments with the following file types. We can apply LaserFiche metadata configured in the templates and fields tab to our attachments. Yes, I would love to do that. Ignore inline attachments. This one is a fairly important box to check. At CDI, we have our CDI logo in our email signature. 
many other organizations do the same. And those images are considered inline attachments. So we don't see that file as, an, as a standard attachment to our email. It shows up as a picture embedded in the message body itself. Those are considered inline attachments and will clutter your repository. Again, we have the option for generating LaserFiche pages for PDF attachments. We will check that box. And finally, we will assign some metadata to our documents. So we have our email archive template configured, and we can populate our information using our tokens and or static text. I'm not going to fill in all of these. We will pick a couple fun ones here. Um, addresses. And here we have recipients. Fill in our subject with our email subject. And we have our option or field here for the message ID. And we can use that unique message ID as a unique identifier to that email. Otherwise, the conversation ID will allow us to almost group the emails the same way as, for example, Outlook does, where we could search for all related emails in that conversation by that conversation ID. Now that we have our profile configured, I will save the, the changes there. And I have my very special webinar Gmail account set up here. So I am going to move this file to our LF email archive folder and apply. So we have our email in our folder there. We will wait just a moment for the email archive service to pick up that email and pull it into our repository. Every minute for a polling interval takes a long time during a webinar. <laughs> there we go. Our email was removed from this folder. I'm going to refresh my Gmail page. And here I have my new processed folder where I can see that document was, or the email was moved into our processed folder. Back in LaserFiche, we now have our email archive folder created. Michael.mathis.cdi at gmail.com. And here is our email message imported into our repository. So here we can see all of our information, including the timesheet attachment. And we also have our timesheet attachment filed separately. If we go back into our configuration, oops, we can, oh, that's not what I was going to do. I was going to send a new email. So that was from an email already in my inbox. I can create a new email to my Gmail account. I remember what I was going to change. I was going to 
under archived messages, I was going to uncheck the ignore inline attachments and make that change. That way we'll see this inline attachment here be imported as, as a separate file, which is exactly what we don't want. And here we will also, of course, I closed my samples folder. So here we'll attach a couple of files to our email. Um, I don't think I used six or two yet. If I did, I apologize. We'll see the same information again. And here we'll send that to Gmail. Within your mailbox, you are able to set up rules. So for example, in Outlook, I have many rules configured to automatically file my emails for me. If we have a rule configured to automatically move those emails into our email archive folder or whatever is being monitored, we won't have to manually drag and drop that file or that email and import agent will then pull in that email from our folder automatically with no one else needing to click anything. So we will give this just another moment or two here to pull in that latest email. Again, one minute goes by a lot faster when we're not in a live webinar. <laughs> oh, because this was from a different email address, michael.mathis at citiesdigital.com, it went to a different folder. That's why it didn't show up right away. So here we can see image one, which is just a blue background. We have image three, which is our CDI logo. Those are the two inline attachments that we didn't want. Here we can see we have our sample two attachment and our sample six attachment. That is going to conclude today's live demonstration. If you do have any questions or would like to learn more information about LaserFish Import Agent, we have resources listed below for LaserFish Answers, the LaserFish Solutions Exchange, the LaserFish Support Site, and the CDI YouTube channel. You can also contact CDI at Consulting, Sales, or support at citiesdigital.com. Thank you for attending today's webinar. My name is Michael Mathis. I am the Solutions Director here at CDI, and I will remain on the webinar for any questions that you may have at this time. We have a question, is there a way to configure the import agent to use the snapshot printer on import? There really is not a way to use the snapshot printer with import agent, unfortunately.
we have a question, what is the best practice for importing an attachment as a separate file? If we were to import the attachment as a separate file, that is really what we had seen during our webinar where we get the separate documents for those attachments. If we were to just leave the attachments in the same document as the email message, we would get only our email message and we wouldn't have any of our attachments. I heard import agent was recently updated. What has changed? There are a lot of exciting changes with import agent. Um, the latest release of import agent does have support now for using the, the email tokens from, whoops, this is email archive. So we do have the ability to use email tokens from not just EML files, but also MSG files. So if those files are exported from Outlook or saved from Outlook, the information will be pulled from those as well. I think I got that the wrong way around. I think that it was EML that had the issue and MSG files did work. I would have to double check the release notes on that one. Without the imported attachment, would a search find info in the email attachment? I don't believe the text of the attachment is going to be indexed unless you file that document as a, or file that attachment as a separate document. These are fantastic questions. Do we have any other questions from anyone? Do we have an option to combine all attachments into a single file? Unfortunately, we don't have the ability to combine those attachments into a single file with import agent. However, depending on the file types, we could combine them into a single file using Laserfiche workflow. I believe the email only has the option of being pulled in as an email file and not as a PDF. Okay, we have a question. Can you monitor a mapped network drive to a SharePoint library? Um, as long as those files are brought into a Windows folder from SharePoint, then yes, import agents should be able to pull those in. Is there a limited number of files that are monitored? I don't believe there is a limit to the number of profiles that you can have with Laserfiche import agents. I would need to double check on that one, but I don't believe there is. Does monitoring continuously drain resources? It really does not. Um, Import Agent is really efficient in how it monitors those folders. The, I suppose the resource drain would come when Import Agent is actually pulling in those files. So if we have Import Agent running on, a, on let's say the same server as the LaserVish server, and it's really old and really slow as import agent is pulling in those files, generating pages for PDFs, extracting text, all of the fun stuff that it does. You may notice some slowdown on a slower server, but continue, if it's just monitoring and watching those folders, you won't notice any slowdown during that time. The resource usage comes in more when import agent is actually importing. Do we have any additional questions today? These are fantastic questions. If anyone does have any questions after our webinar today, please feel free to reach out to your account manager.
or to any of the resources previously listed. All right, I don't see any additional questions coming in. So thank you again, everyone, for attending today's webinar and for all of your awesome questions. Again, please fill out the survey that you'll receive shortly. And I hope to see you attending again next month.